This is an exponentials and logarithms question. Give it a go first. If you get stuck, skip ahead through the video to see the hints that I provide for each part. So for part one, the hint for this part would be to think about how we can deal with this two here. The two means that we can't just simply cancel out the logarithms. Um, if the two weren't there, we could just cancel out the logs, but because of it, we can't. So think about how we can manipulate the left-hand side to change how that two functions are on the left-hand side of that equation. And then after you've eventually got rid of the logs, you also want to think about when you're simplifying the equation, whether you consider the positive solution or the negative solution. Um, think about the constraints for x from what we have inside these two brackets and the fact that a is a positive constant. Okay, so let's just write this out. So 2 log x plus a is equal to log of 16a to the power of 6. So we can't get rid of the log straight away because of the 2 that we have here. So we have to figure out a way that we can manipulate the left-hand side so we can get rid of the logs. Um, if we were to have log of x is equal to log of y, with an equation like this, because you're doing the same function to both sides, you're doing log of both sides, they can just cancel out, and this will just become x is equal to y. And another way that you can think about that is if you were to do 10 to the power of both sides, because 10 to the power of something and log to the base 10 of something are inverse operations, then those two things will cancel out, the 10 to the power of and the log to the base 10 of, and then you're left with x is equal to y. So we can't do that here because of the two that we have in front. So how we can deal with that is we can use the power law. So then the left-hand side then becomes log of x plus a to the power of 2. And the right-hand side, keep it as it is for now. And now that we have log of something is equal to log of something, now we can cancel out uh, those two logs. And we end up with x plus a squared is equal to 16a to the power of 6. So at this step, it's tempting to think we can expand the left-hand side. And if I were to do that, we get this. And then if we were to rearrange this, we see an equation that isn't easily factorizable. There probably is a way of factorizing it, but it's not straightforward. So probably not the best way to solve this question. What would be better instead is to square root both sides from this step here. So the left-hand side, if we square root it, becomes just x plus a. And the right-hand side, we'd have to, these two things are multiplied by each other, so we have to square root each side, or each bit rather. Um, so we end up with 4 a to the power of 3. And then because we're square rooting, we would get a plus or minus as well. Now this is what we need to think about. Are we going to consider just the positive solution or the negative solution, or could it be either one? So we look back to the question to see what information we're given. We're told that a is a positive constant. We're not told anything about what x is equal to. Like we're not told that x is positive or x is negative. But we do know that with a log graph, if I were to draw just a generic log graph, so this could be this is y is equal to log x, we can't put in negative x values into this. We can put in values of x greater than 0, but we can't put in negative x values. So we know that whatever we put into a log must be positive. So then if we look at these two things, specifically the left-hand side, that tells us that x plus a must be positive if we're putting it inside of a logarithm. So we know that x plus a is bigger than 0, and that means that x plus a must equal to the positive variation, so 4a to the power of 3. And then we can rearrange. So we get x is equal to 4a to the power of 3 minus a, and that will be our answer. So for part 2, part 2 is pretty straightforward. For this one, you want to use, you want to think about how you can get rid of this minus sign. 
how you can convert it into something else. And then you want to think about how you can get rid of the logs. So let's write this out. So how we're going to be getting rid of the minus sign is by using the division rule. So the minus effectively turns into a divide and then we can combine the two logarithms together. So this then becomes log to the base 3 of 9y plus b all over 2y minus b. That's equal to 2. And then to get rid of the log to the base 3, we can then do 3 to the power of both sides. And we end up with 9y plus b over 2y minus b is 3 squared, which is 9. And now we just rearrange. So bring this to the right hand side. So times it all by 9. And then we'll end up with 9y plus b is equal to 18y minus 9b. And then rearrange. So I'll bring the 9b to the left. Bring the 9y to the right. And then we end up with y is equal to 10b over 9. And that is our final solution to part 2.